Hello everyone, my name is Miss Haraholic and welcome to my channel Drop Dead Gorgeous Mortuary Hair and Makeup where we explore the cosmetic side of the funeral home industry. If you're interested in things like this or you've been wanting to further your career as a mortuary cosmetologist, subscribe to my channel. And if you just so happen to like my videos, give me a huge thumbs up. That way other professionals like yourself can also learn more information about the funeral home industry. In today's video, we're going to talk about hairstyling for the deceased. It is very different from performing services on a living client. One difference is you have to actually style someone's hair laying down. So apart from figuring out how to style the hair, gravity is a major factor when it comes to actually styling it. So just imagine yourself lying down. How does your hair fall? It definitely doesn't look the same as it would if you were sitting or standing up. There are also other factors to take into consideration when styling hair of a deceased person. Now the hair texture doesn't necessarily change due to the embalming process. But once the blood has been removed from the body and the person is no longer breathing, there is no transportation of such necessities to the hair follicles. Oxygen and blood encourage a healthy scalp that generates growth of strong, healthy hair. Now, hair follicles thrive on nutrients and oxygen supplied by the blood capillaries. So, a lack of oxygen affects all the cells, including the hair cells that can cause premature hair thinning and hair loss. So this gives reason why to when you comb a deceased person's hair, there's a possibility that there will be shedding. It also depends on how long the person has been deceased. Now the longer that a person has been deceased, the hair tends to shed more. Now I've had cases where I've had minimal shedding and I've also had other cases to when I first started to style the hair, it shocked me because I was afraid to comb their hair because it might not be any left. Now let's talk about styling. When styling a deceased person's hair, you typically focus around framing their face, their hair around their face. So that means that you are only working with the hair that's in the front. I typically don't worry about the hairs in the back because it won't be seen. Now, depending on the hairstyle that your client wore while living, depends on how to proceed with the hair of styling the hair. When curling someone's hair, instead of curling the hair backwards, I tend to curl the hair forwards towards the face. Another issue that occurs is there may not be enough hair to style. Now, if this situation arises, simply just fit the hair in the back down the middle and pull it forward to give you more hair to work with. Now, you can also tease their hair to give it more volume or more fullness. Now, let's talk about styling with heat tools. Let this be a disclaimer. I always start in the back of the head to see how well the post embalmed hair reacts to the heat from the styling tool. This also helps avoid any singeing or burning or discoloration caused by the tool being too hot. Although the embalming process doesn't necessarily affect the hair directly, it can be absorbed into the hair, which can cause a reaction and weaken hair bonds. I particularly am careful with someone who has chemically treated hair, lightly colored hair, gray hair, or very thin hair. You may also run into other factors such as head trauma. If someone was in a car accident or experienced blunt force trauma to their head, you may have to find ways to disguise their wound. You may also encounter times to where the hair was cut due to an autopsy or their scalp was damaged due to an accident caused by swelling. This is where your expertise come into play. You have to find creative ways to somewhat mimic their hairstyles, but also disguise the wound so they can be presentable to their family. Now, if it's too difficult to disguise the wounds, you can also use hats, scarves, or wigs to cover up these wounds in certain circumstances. Now, another subject that I want to touch on is the scalp. Now, typically in hairstyling, there's movement of the scalp or the scalp can be considered to be loose. But in regards to a deceased person after the embalming process, their scalp tends to hard just like the rest of the body. Now what I mean by a loose scalp, just envision you styling someone's hair, a living person's hair, and you pull their hair taut. Now you can see that their scalp moves a little bit. Now with a deceased person, you will not have this issue. Now, if you want to learn more about different styling techniques, comment below or you can email me at dropdeadgorgeous13 at gmail.com 
or you can follow me on other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook as Miss Mortuary. Miss underscore Mortuary. Well, thanks again for watching my videos. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified when I post a new video. Now, thanks for watching. Bye.